Welcome to Tales of Honor, a podcast with a mission to tell the true stories of every recipient of our nation's highest military award, the Medal of Honor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Tales of Honor podcast. This is episode 390, and I feel like I'm coming at you with a lot of energy. I don't know why. (laughs) <laughs> but that's what's happening. Uh, we got a new conflict to go over. We are now going to be covering the Mexican campaign, which there are a lot of um, a lot of different names to to go over this. I, I'm I have settled on the Mexican campaign. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, it's been called the occupation of Veracruz, the United States involvement in, in the Mexican Revolution. So lots of different names. I'm going with the and also the Mexican expedition campaign. I'm going with just Mexican campaign just from here on out. Don't expect anything else from me regarding this. So uh, I don't have any birthdays to go over today. Uh, We don't have anything until next week, it seems. So no birthdays for a little bit. A reminder to go into the show notes and learn about the Medal of Honor mail call. National Medal of Honor Day is coming up. Wow, this month is actually cruising right along. Uh, At the end of the month, March 25th, is National Medal of Honor Day. So get your letters out, and you can do that. You can learn how to write to a living Medal of Honor recipient uh, by visiting the link in the show notes to get that done. Now, since we are doing a new campaign, I've covered, I think, two stories from the Mexican campaign once before. However, they were part of the double Medal of Honor recipient uh, list. So I, uh, I didn't exactly talk about the campaign, just those two individual stories. So I'm going to do like I've done before a quick recap. And instead of me trying to pick it apart, I found a very good summary on the U S army's history page. So this is directly from the U S army center of military history or history.army.mil. And it specifically says the Mexican expedition campaign. So I'm going to read their one and a half paragraph summary before we get into today's tale of honor. So let's start with that. An increasing number of border incidents early in 1916 culminated in an invasion of American territory on 8 March when Francisco Pancho Villa and his band of 500 to 1,000 men raided Columbus, New Mexico. Elements of the 13th Cavalry repulsed the attack, but there were 24 American casualties, 14 military and 10 civilian. Immediate steps were taken to organize a punitive expedition of about 10,000 men under Brigadier General John J. Pershing to capture Villa. The 7th, 10th, 11th, and 13th Cavalry Regiments, 6th and 16th Infantry Regiments, part of the 6th Field Artillery and supporting elements crossed the border into Mexico in mid-March, followed later by the 5th Cavalry, 17th and 24th Infantry Regiments, and Engineer and other units. Pershing was subject to orders which required him to respect the sovereignty of Mexico and was further hindered by the fact that the Mexican government and people resented the invasion. Advanced elements of the expedition penetrated as far as Peral, some 400 miles south of the border, but Villa was never captured. The campaign consisted primarily of dozens of minor skirmishes with small bands of insurgents. There were even clashes with Mexican army units. The most serious was on 21 June 1916 at Carrizal, where a detachment of the 10th Cavalry was nearly destroyed. War would probably have been declared, but for the critical situation in Europe. Even so, virtually the entire regular army was involved, and most of the National Guard had been federalized and concentrated on the border before the end of the affair. Normal relations with Mexico were restored, eventually, by diplomatic negotiation, and the troops withdrawn from Mexico in February 1917. Minor clashes with Mexican irregulars continued to disturb the border from 1917 to 1919. So, that's what we have here. Uh, That is a nice little summary, courtesy of the U.S. Army Center of Military History. So that's what we got. So now we know a little bit more about why these uh, recipients for the next two months between March and April uh, will have received their medals of honor. So let's move into today's episode number 390. Julian was born on the 22nd of October, 1874 in Eagle Harbor, Michigan, where 
of his five siblings, his youngest brother and sister, Antoine and Marguerite, were also born. His father was a mining engineer that moved from France to Tamaqua, Pennsylvania, where he met Julian's mother. The family moved from Pennsylvania to Michigan, Canada, Virginia, and West Virginia. West Virginia is where Julian would join the 2nd West Virginia Volunteers in May of 1898 as a second lieutenant, receiving a commission to first lieutenant in the 10th Cavalry Regiment almost three years later. Julian had participated in the Spanish-American War and the Philippine-American War, where he would be charged and convicted of using a torture method called the water cure on a Filipino insurgent. This is when you force someone to drink a large amount of water in a very short amount of time, and for this, he was suspended for three months and docked $50 for each of those months. During the same time, his brother, Antoine, who had enlisted in the U.S. Army, received the Medal of Honor for his actions at the Battle of Pei, and reportedly, Julian had become obsessed with his brother's new accolade, and one time said, quote, He wears it for a watch fob, the damn civilian. I gotta get me one of them things for myself if I bust, end quote. Well, Julian got his wish when he deployed to serve in the Mexican campaign because his actions would earn him the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, For extraordinary heroism in action on 13 April 1919 while serving with Troop K, 1st U.S. Cavalry, in action at Aqua Prieta, Mexico. Captain Gajot crossed the field of fire to obtain the permission of the rebel commander to receive the surrender of the surrounded forces of Mexican Federals and escort such forces together with five Americans held as prisoners to the American line. What this citation doesn't mention is that Julian rode his horse back and forth between government troops and Mexican rebels for an hour in heavy fire and was able to eventually ensure safe passage of five American prisoners, 25 Mexican government soldiers, and some Mexican rebels which prevented any further damage to the personnel on the U.S. side of the border. General Leonard Wood, who would override the requirement of the cited act being performed in action, said Julian's actions deserved, quote, either a court-martial or a medal of honor, end quote. Well, we know which he received from President Taft in December of 1912, making him the only recipient to be awarded it for peacekeeping actions. Julian went on to serve in World War I and retired from the Army as a colonel in 1934 after 36 years of service. He was married to Mildred, who was 23 years younger than him in 1910, and she died about a month after the birth of their only child, James. Now, I will state that based on what I have found, Mildred was only 12 years old when they were married and 21 when she gave birth to their son, if the years I found are correct. I say if because in this search, I found one year that was incorrect when referring to Julian. Julian Edmund Victor Gajot died on the 7th of April, 1938, at the age of 63, and he is one of five sets of brothers to have both received the Medal of Honor and the only set to receive them for different conflicts. He is buried in Arlington National Cemetery, Section 6, Grave 8423-NH. His oldest brother, Claude, and his wife, Eula, are also buried in Arlington, Section 41. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you for listening to Tales of Honor, and if you enjoyed the show, please be sure to subscribe and tell your friends and family. Tales of Honor is written and produced by Christoph Ambrosch, and theme music is Loyalty and Duty by Floru's Music. If you have any questions, you can send an email to Tales of Honor Podcast at gmail.com, and please be sure to visit Tales of Honor Podcast.com for more episodes and information. 